Put me where you want me, Lord, where I belong. Give me the strength to do thy perfect will. And when I'm in the lowest valley, I can climb the highest hill. Praise God, He wants us to be here this morning. Amen. And uh, thank you all for being here this morning. It is good to see many of you. I haven't seen some for a bit. Uh, we did go on vacation there for a short bit. Took a sh short jaunt up to Illinois and, and Wisconsin. Uh, got some good illustrations, so you'll hear a couple of those. But but uh, it was a good time. And and uh, but thank God, uh, you know, He's always there with us. Amen. No matter where where we're at. So this morning we're in the book of Daniel this morning, the book of Daniel. Book of Daniel this morning. Ezekiel, Daniel, Jose. I've titled the message this morning, Weighed in the Balances. Weighed in the Balances. Many years ago, used to be the old scales that they would have. Uh, you would put a, a weight of knowing one particular, what the value or the, the, the content of that uh, weight was, whether it be in kilograms or in pounds. and Put that on one side, and then obviously as you're balancing out the scale, if you will, you put out whatever objects or other things that are put on the opposite side. Over the history of time, those those scales have changed. Obviously, we we see the old analog. You know, I, when I grew up, it was a whole different you know side. And I'm sure some of you guys remember. And even if you go to the doctor every once in a while, you'll see the old-fashioned scales that they take the the weights and kind of same concept of putting one object on one side and another object on the other and balancing those out or obviously determining which is heavier or lighter, if you will, obviously during Bible school.
school, I know that they do the penny drive, and, and when the boys and the girls, obviously, it, you know, whoever's winning, it, it's teetered in one direction or the other, and but we see that. But think of that, spiritually speaking, uh, speaking from uh, the perspective of the believer, also the perspective of the one that has never trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Someday we're going to be weighed in the balances. Being weighed in the balances. We're in chapter 5 here this morning in the book of Daniel. We're in chapter 5 this morning, and we're going to go ahead and read the entire chapter of Daniel, chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, starting in verse 1. If you dare say amen. amen. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he chased the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver, golden and silver vessels, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold. Notice that lowercase g. Gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw that the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against the other. Now, can you picture that? That's some fear. That's some fear. Verse 7, The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known the king to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and, we will, and he will show thee the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought before me, that they should read this writing. And make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shalt be third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty, and glory, and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all the people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would slow, slew, whom he would kept alive, and whom he would have set up, and whom he would have put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened, in pride he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took from him his glory from him. 
And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed, he pointeth over it whomsoever he will. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver, and of gold, and of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and his writing was written. And this is the writing that was written, Mini Mini Tekel Yufarsin. This is the interpretation of the thing, Mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Paris, the kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians, then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of Chaldeans, slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for a day, Lord, a beautiful day outside. And Lord, I thank you for a beautiful day that we can come here, Lord, to your house. And Lord, I thank you for those that have come out faithfully, Lord. And I thank you for the ones, our visitors, Lord, once. Lord, uh, I pray that you'd bless each and every heart and each and every life. And Lord, as we open your word and we, we uh, Lord, just uh, see some truth in your word here in the book of Daniel, Lord, as we see a, a passage. Lord, uh, we, we grow up uh, learning about this passage, and we hear it from our youth, and uh, for those that have been raised in church for some time or attended as a youth. And, and Lord, we see a very familiar passage. But, Lord, tonight I want us to see it from a spiritual perspective here this morning, Lord, that you'd just bless each and every heart. Lord, I pray you'd help me to preach with passion, and, Lord, speak through me. Uh, Lord, I give you the glory for it, and I thank you, Father, for what your Holy Spirit's going to do here tomorrow, this morning. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Weighed in the balances. Weighed in the balances. This morning I have six points to the passage, to, to the message here being weighed in the balances. First of all, I want us to see Nebuchadnezzar's pride. Nebuchadnezzar's pride. We know that Nebuchadnezzar was here Belshazzar's father. Uh, we read the preceding uh, chapter and, and we see Nebuchadnezzar. He, he had become a great and mighty man. I mean, he was a, uh, a, 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 the rule. He ruled a kingdom, and it was a vast kingdom, if you will, very powerful there in in Babylon, if you will. And and uh, but I want us to see three things about his pride. There was uh, the stages of pride, if you will. You know, pride has stages. It has it has uh, progression, if you will. There's there's first of all, I, I find the rise of pride or pride's rise, if you will. There in verse 17 and, and 18 and uh, 19, actually, we see. It says, Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing of the king, and make known unto him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty, and honor, and glory, and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, all nations, and languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he would slew, and whom he would he kept alive, whom he would set up, to whom he would be put down. He put down. Pride's rise. You know, in life, child of God, you know, our pride gets the best of us sometimes. You know, we get up in, in, in our lives and we say, look what I'm doing. You know, instead of look what God has done in my life, we say, look what, look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. You know, it's so easy to, to want to take credit and want to take glory for it. I mean, it, it, that's the way the devil, he, he wants, that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to, to not to look to God and, and, and trust in God and realize that anything that we have, child of God, is a blessing from God. You know, we're to, we're to praise God in, in the good and in the bad. But sometimes we, we look to God in, in the bad, 
But in the good, we, we say, well, Lord, I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to put you off to the side a little bit. And when I, when I need you, you, you know, and then I'll call on you and, 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 and look at me, you know, I've, I've, I've accomplished some pretty great things in life. I've become successful. I've moved my way up the ladder in, in the realms of success and, and, and the, in the facets of the world, if you will, and how the world perceives success and, and what is good and what is not good. We, we see that and, and, and we get so, so caught up in our pride, so caught up in, in our boastfulness and, and thinking that, that you and I are, are something when really we're not nothing more than just a bunch of dirt. I mean, really, really, one day we're going to pass away. You know, if God doesn't return and take us all home, uh, we won't pass away. Nobody has lived forever. And uh, we will pass away and, and dust, dust, ashes to ashes. That's the way we are. We'll just return to the earth as, as we came out of. But we get so lifted up. And Nebuchadnezzar was one of those. He, he had done some great and mighty things. But instead of realizing where that great and that power and that might, you know, who was in control, he took credit for it. May it never be said that you and I are taking credit for anything good in our lives. Nothing good in our lives should ever be, uh, even, you know, even the bad. God, God does allow the bad things to happen in our life. He, he allows things that, uh, you know, really we, we, we could do without. Things that, you know, really it's like, I, I really didn't need to go through that, or I didn't really need to experience that, or, or you know, I, I kind of had one of those mornings this morning, you know, and, and you know, getting everybody out of the house, and then we can't find the keys to the van. So now, now we all have to drive separate vehicles. And so my daughter, I, I love her to death, and, and I, I don't want to embarrass her, but I give her a hard time sometimes. I'm like, honey, people start driving like this when they're 90 years old, you know? <laughs> I'm very thankful she's a very cautious driver. She is, she is a good driver. Thank Praise the Lord for that. But sometimes, you know, you go to the speed limit. Well, today it wasn't her. Somebody pulled in front between me and her. You know, I was following her because I know that I'll, I'll take off and I'll leave her behind and I have to slow down and watch, watch where she's at. But anyway, long story short, you know, somebody pulled in, in, front, of, in front of me and, and I thought, oh, my goodness, the Lord tease me patience here. And, and uh, you know, finally I prayed, you know, Lord, you know, give me an opportunity to pass somebody or, or you know, let them turn off. Well, they turned off, you know, and then I came to, you know, thinking I'm good. You know, I'll get behind Rachel and then all I'll have to worry about is her. And then before long, somebody pulled right in front of me. I thought, wow. But the Bible says we need to give thanks to God and, and everything. Give praise to God in every, every situation, even though it's most not, maybe not the most desirable, even though it may be a, a something, a, an obstacle in our way. We need to give God the credit and the glory, even in those times. You know, Lord, I, I'm going to praise you because my situation could be a whole lot worse. It can be a whole lot worse. When we think it can't be, yeah, that's when it becomes worse. So we've got to be careful. We can't let pride rise become pride's run secondly pride's run there in verses 20 and 21 but when his heart was lifted up when his pride got the best of him it says his mind hardened in pride he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and his dwelling was with the wild asses they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dews of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. You know, many good men and many good women have faced that same ruin. Really, really they have. There's been a lot of good Christians. There's been a lot of good preachers out there that have let the pride go to their head. And it's destroyed them. There's been a lot of good women, teachers that have taught in Sunday school and have taught and done some amazing things for God. But they got that pride, that pride got in the way, whether it be in that the spiritual realm or even in the physical with their, their business or whatever that may be. They, they took away the, that glory that, you know, God had blessed them with and said, well, look what I've done. And it becomes their ruin becomes their ruin. Let it things going through their head. Not let us forsake God's blessings, you know, uh, you know, and God's provisions. In Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13, it says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy in the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Proverbs 11, 2, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. 
but the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 13.10, only by pride cometh contention, but with well advised is wisdom. Proverbs 14.3, and the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 21, 24, proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. Proverbs 29, 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Pride will cause ruin. Solomon knew it best. He really did. He really did. We look at the life of Solomon and we see a man that started out so well. He started out really well. He asked God, and he could have asked God for riches. He could have asked God for, well, you know what he asked God for? For wisdom. Right. He said, Lord, I want, to, I want to know how you want me to handle the responsibility that, that's been given to me as a king over your people. All he asked for was wisdom, but we know that God blessed him with much more than wisdom. He blessed him with wealth and all these things. But you know what, what got in his way? It was pride. It was pride. He understood what the impact of pride was. There was a king by the name of King Canute, and uh, he ruled over the land of Denmark, Norway, and England more than a thousand years ago. A wise ruler, he worked diligently to make the lives of his subjects better. As is often the case, he was surrounded by those who sought to gain influence and prominence with him. And according to the ancient story, he grew tired of their continual flattery and determined to put an end to it. He ordered that his throne be carried out to the seashore and gathered his courtiers about. By the sea, the king commanded the tide not to come in. Yet soon the waters were lapping around his legs as the tide did not heed him. According to one historian's account, King Knut rose up to, from his throne and said, Let all men know how empty and worthless is the power of kings, for there is none worthy of the name but he whom heaven and earth and sea obey by eternal laws. Amen. That king realized where power and honor and dignity and all of that came from. It didn't come from him. It came from God and God Almighty. Not only do I find that pride rise and, and pride's ruin, but I find here pride being repeated. Verse 22, it says, And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. You knew what your dad went through. You, could, you know, Daniel's saying, you, Come on, man, you should have learned from your dad's mistakes. Learn from your dad's mistakes. You know, child of God, we need to learn from somebody else's mistakes. You know, the, the problem you know, we have sometimes is we have to make the mistakes ourselves before we really learn from them. And then sometimes then we really don't learn from them. We just repeat them. And, we, and, we, and you think it's, that's the definition of insanity, right? You keep doing the same thing over and over again, and then you expect different results. That's what we do. We just think, well, maybe, you know, it didn't work last time, but maybe it will this time. It never works for you. It never does. Right. Pride never results in anything good. Not only do I find Nebuchadnezzar's pride, but secondly, I find Daniel preaching. Daniel preaching here in verses 22 and 23. It says, Now his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heavens, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, and of gold, and of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the, Lord, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and who are his all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Daniel's preaching to him. He's saying, you know what? He said, you're wrong. He said, you should have known better than that. Your father, you know, he did this, and, and here you are repeating it. And, and he said, it's, you know, he said, really, you're, 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 you've taken things from the house of the Lord. You've dishonored God, not only with, with just your kingdom that you're running, but here you are taking things from the Lord, his, his house, the things that were put into the treasury, these, these, this gold and stuff that was, was stored up for the Lord and put aside in his sacred, things that were sacred. You know, we see our world doing that today. They really are. America is doing the exact same thing. 
They're making these gods of, of gold and silver, and, and they're making the god of sports, and they're making the god of, of TV, and they're making the god of, of work, and they're making the god of, of pleasure and, and, and recreation. All these gods that America has created and, and, and have, have invented, and they, they're destroying America. They destroy the people of, of America. And sadly, Christians are allowing these things to get in their life. They really are. They really are. We're, we're getting caught, so caught up in the things of the world, so, so much caught up in trying to keep up with, with, with the Joneses, the, ne the, the ones next door, or, or the ones down the street, or, or we got to get bigger and better, or our, our kids got to be the best in, in this sport or that sport, or we, we got to give our kids everything that, that they don't really need. Right. And we get so caught up in that, and we serve in these other gods, and we forget the one true God. The one that has brought us to salvation. And you know, when we've trusted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we, we're to put off all those things. All, all those things are, are old and they're to be passed away. You know, really, we need more preachers like Daniel. We really do. We need preachers that's going to point out and say, you know what, it's ridiculous. You know what we do, and and really, that preacher needs to be. He needs, to, and Daniel was was this way. I mean, he was pure in his life. We we look at the life of Daniel, and man, I tell you what, he served the Lord. It didn't matter what it was, it didn't matter who it was, it they didn't influence. He was accountable to God. You know, child of God, we're accountable to God right. and nobody else. We don't have to answer to anybody else, right. and and we're not going to be accountable to anybody else. You and I are going to be standing for an almighty God someday, whether it's at that great white throne judgment or whether it's at the beam seat, you know, judgment. If we're unsaved, we're going to be standing right there at the, the great white throne judgment. And we're going to be trying to negotiate with God and say, well, this is this is what I this is all the good I did. But we know that all of that just isn't going to work. It isn't going to work. There's nothing that you and I can do that's good enough. But for the child of God, we're going to stand before God and we're going to be so humbled. You know, that pride that we once had or that pride that we think we have or, or the one that's lifted us up in, in our state currently. All that pride is just going to be nothing but humility when we stand before an almighty and a just God. The one that, has, that even that, that spoke the existence of, of this, what we know, this world as we know it. God, give us some more preachers like Daniel. Not do I find Daniel preaching, but I find here, thirdly, God's proclamation. God's proclamation here in verses 24 through 28. It says, Then was the part of the hand sent from him, talking about God. And this was the writing that was written. And this is the writing that was written, Meaning, meaning, tekel you farsin. This is the interpretation of the thing, meaning God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tickle, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Belshazzar, God's measurement for your life. We put you on the scale and you don't measure up. You haven't measured up. You should have known better. You should have learned from the mistakes of your father. Your father even said in his last days, as we read there, and in the preceding chapter, as we'll read in a minute, he realized who was in control. You know, child of God, we need to realize who's in control. You know, folks, we really need to remember who's in control. You know, we know it in our head. We hear it preached and we hear it taught, but really, do we believe it? Verse 28, Thy, Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Not only do I find God's proclamation, but I find Daniel's promotion. Daniel's promotion. You know, it's, it's kind of a, you think about that. Daniel, Daniel said, I, I really don't want your gifts. I don't want your money. I, I really don't want anything. You know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interpret this. But we, we find here Daniel was promoted. Here in verse 29, it says, Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. Now, do you think Daniel let his pride get in the way? Yeah, absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. Daniel wasn't wanting any reward or any, any, anything, for, any result from this. He, he, he didn't really want anything. But we know that he got a, a promotion here. He got, you know, moved up in the kingdom, third ruler there in the kingdom. And, 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 and we know as we, as we, if we were to go on through the remaining chapter of Daniel, obviously he was a man that remained humble. He was a man that, you know, didn't allow pride to get in the way of serving God and being, you know, God's, uh, uh, you know, really a preacher of righteousness, if you will. Not only do I find Daniel's promotion, but fifthly, I find sin's penalty. Sin's penalty. In verses 30 and 31, it says, In that night with Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. That night, his soul was required of him. Like the one in the, in the Gospels that was building the barns. You know, the one that had all of this success and this, this, this a fruit of his labor, if you will. And he said, I'm going to tear down my barns, I'm going to build bigger barns. And he said, you're foolish. Because tonight, your soul is going to be required. What, if, what about us? The one that's sitting here tonight, one that's listening. If our soul was being required of us tonight, if tonight, at whatever time, let's say midnight, the bell rings, and you and I will go from this life and to an eternity, what's next? You know, for many people, they believe, well, I'm just going to die and I'm going to go to the grave and that's it. You know, that's, that's, that's a morbid, I mean, that's a terrible thought. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of an empty, you know, thought. And we know that's not the case. Right. One day we're going to die. And we're going to stand before an almighty God. Right. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Are you going to be found wanting? When you're weighed in the balances, are you going to be found wanting? Are you going to be found lacking? First of all, I'm speaking from a spiritual perspective. Have you been saved? Have you ever trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Because when you're weighed in the balancing, if you weigh all the good things that you've done, all the good and all the, the money that you've given to, to the church, and all the, you could have been a member of every church that exists in America, all that, you put it all in, you could put all of that of everything, the good all of, all of Americans have done, and you put it over here against sin's penalty, the price of, of sin, Sorry. You're going to be outweighed. You're going to be found wanting. But for the child of God, praise God. When we have the penalty of sin, and we see over here on this side God's righteousness, what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary, and we have accepted that. We have an atonement for that payment. Amen. I mean, think about that. That's something to be excited about, child of God. Amen. We see that. And we, you know what? On that day, we're not going to be found wanting. We're not going to be found wanting, praise God. We're not going to be the one that's standing there and God says, depart from me, ye the work iniquity. I never knew you. God, I, I've done so many good things in this life. I've done so much good stuff. I've given so much money and I've been a member of the church and I've done, I've done some wonderful things. And God's going to say, I don't have any idea who you are. I, you, you, I, I never knew you. Depart from me. And then that person is going to spend an eternity in hell where the worm dieth not. You say, what's that worm? That worm is that conscious. That's that one thinking, you know what? I had an opportunity here on, on, on Sunday, August, what is today, 16th. And I didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't listen to what that preacher had to say. I realized that if I died that, that, and I was put on that scale, that I, I would be found wanting as well. But they don't do anything about it because, you know, that's the, that's the problem that, uh, that people think is, well, I, tomorrow will be here. You know, folks, we're not guaranteed in five minutes from now. But we're really not. And people look, go through life and they realize and they think that, you know, I'm going to be here f forever. I mean, we, we, that's the, the, the mentality that we have. We just think that. And then death comes to our lives. It, it comes, whether it be in somebody that's close to us, or, and, and eventually, you know, if we're fortunate enough for the lost person, they get to their deathbed and they have an opportunity. But you know, sadly, there's a lot of people that will go out today 
and, and whether it be in this community or whether it be in Ohio or in America, but they're going to go out in their car from wherever they're going to be, and they're going to be in a fatal accident. And they're going to go from this life to the next, and they're going to be standing before God and giving an account. Are you going to be found wanting when you're weighed in the balances? The penalty of sin, the penalty of sin. You know, folks, we've forgotten what sin is. Really. You know, for the Christians, even we forgot what sin is. We, we, we toy with it. You know, we toy with sin. And, and you know, James 4, 17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth the good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You know, that pretty much covers everything right there. I mean, we, we as a child of God, we should know the Word of God. So we should know what God has commanded us. We should know what sin is and what sin isn't. But sadly, we, we don't. And, and sometimes we, we let it creep into our homes or into our lives. And, and you know, we got to be careful because sin really has a big appetite. Susanna Wesley defined sin to her young son, John Wesley, said, If you would judge of the lawlessness or the unlawlessness of pleasure, then take this simple rule. Whatever that weakens your reason, impairs the tenderness of your, con tenderness of your conscience, obscures your sense of God, and takes off the relish of spiritual things, that to you is sin. You know, we should do as Joseph did. You know, when sin came, when the temptation of sin came, he ran from it. Right. Joseph knew better. He said, well, you know, how can I do this thing against God? How can I sin against God? You know, when sin comes, we're sinning against God. If we partake in sin, if we let sin be prevalent in our lives, you know, we're, we're basically mocking God. We're, we're just saying, you know, God, I, I just really don't care what you, what you say about it. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just having a good time. It's just a good time. It's just temporary. You know, I promise I, it won't last long. I'll just, I'll just dabble in it for a few, few minutes or a few days, and then it days become weeks, and weeks become years. And it drags us down, drags us down. It was said that few college football coaches have made a point against drugs as effectively as Eric Russell of Georgia Southern College. Many years ago, he arranged for a couple of good old country boys to burst into a routine team meeting and throw a writhing, hissing, six-foot-long rattlesnake on the table in front of the squad. As you can imagine, as many of us would have done, everyone screamed and scattered. Russell recalls, I told them, when drugs come into a room, you're not nearly as apt to leave as when a rattlesnake comes in, but they'll both kill you. Sin is like that rattlesnake. They'll both kill us. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord in Romans 6.23. You know, sin presents itself as appealing, not appalling. It really does. That's the way sin is. If sin was appalling, then people wouldn't, wouldn't have anything to do with it. But it looks pretty. It, it looks really nice, you know. It's the things that, you know, and, and, and there's so many temptations out there. And, and men, we got to be careful. Women, we got to be careful. I mean, we all got to be careful. We got to protect ourselves. We got to never let our guard down. It's like a cow, you know. Uh, cows are, they're funny creatures. Aggravate sometimes. They get out of the fence, you know. They're, they just, they, they, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, right? So, they, you know, a cow, they'll, they'll just eat a little bit, and, and they'll, then they keep their head down, and they'll eat, and, and they'll say, oh, there's a little bit better spot over there, and they'll go to that, and eventually they'll make their way to a fence. And they'll say, wow, man, look around at their stuff and say, well, that grass looks better over there. So they'll break through the fence, or they'll get out of the fence, and they'll find a way. And they'll get over there, and pretty soon they'll, they'll just keep doing that same thing. They'll keep their head down, and they'll just keep grazing on grass, and before long they'll turn around, and they'll say, Whoa, where did I go? That's the way sin is. Right. It's that green grass. And we get to a fence and we say, well, this is, you know, this, I know that God put this boundary here for us. This is a Christian speaking. He's put this boundary here for us and it's fair for a reason. But, but you know what? It, it ain't going to hurt for me to go on the other side of that fence for a little bit because I'll be able to come back. And then, then you get out there and you start nibbling on that grass, and it's tasting pretty good to you. And then you see another little patch of grass down the road there, and you just keep going and on and on. You turn around and you say, well, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm a little further into this sin than I thought I was. And that's how sin works. 
Sin, it takes us deeper and further than we want to go. Sin is costly. Sin is costly. Not trying to compare you to a cow, but, you know, really we all all, um, need to be careful. Lastly, I find man's preparation. Man's preparation, not just sin's penalty, but man's preparation. What are we doing to be ready? What are we doing to be ready? Matthew 24 and 44 says, Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. You know, a lot of people have been preaching a long time, Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon. You hear that a lot. Preachers preaching today, Jesus is coming soon. And he's going to be here, it's, and it's, going to be, it, it's not as long as it has been. And, and really, it's, it's really, it's looking really, really close. So whether we go in death or whether we go in God's rapture, and, uh, and sadly for those that have never trusted Jesus Christ, you're going to be left behind. But praise God for us that, that, are, that are with Him. We'll be going together in glory. And we won't be here for that tribulation period. We won't be here for that, all that, that turmoil. We'll be back. We'll be back on that thousand year reign. But there's a day we're going to be given account. Are we prepared? Are we ready? Have we made our reservation? We, we went on vacation here, and, and, and I've never been one not to have a plan. I plan for a living, you know. That's what I do, you know. I'm, I'm an engineer, so I, I, mean, I just, I, it does, I, I really hardly ever do anything on a whim. Well, we did something on a whim. We just went up to Illinois, in, you know, uh, Illinois and, and Wisconsin area for vacation, and I've never been a fan of Illinois. And I don't want to get off on a, on a tangent here, but Illinois, I've never had anything good happen to me in Illinois. And, and and I broke down and the transmission went out of my truck in Chicago. I've I've you know I I've got all kinds of stories of, of bad things happening in Illinois. There's some good people in there in Illinois. Joshua, you know, we know that uh, Austin and Janae are up there and their, their family. But but I personally have never had good experiences. Anyway, we we didn't make reservations, so we get to an area and and there's literally nothing available. No campgrounds. There was one campground had one reservation, and it was a tent site, but it was at a brewery. And sadly, I thought about it. I thought, you know, I'll just be at the campsite. It, but I had to go into the brewery to get my reservation, or the place where they would. And and I thought, more than likely, I'll run into somebody that I know here in Illinois. <laughs> but no, seriously, I. I I mean, even though the, the devil tempted me with it, I thought, now, so I, I thought, well, I'm going to break down. We're going to buy a ho- We're going to get a hotel room. I, I don't like staying in hotels, you know, for bed bugs and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, always go in there in the dark, you know, and look, look in the, making sure there's no, you know what I mean? Talking about looking in the beds before you turn the lights on. But I go to the hotel room and I ask the guy and I'm like, you know, hey, can, I'd like to get a, I actually called for a reservation. I'd like to get one room tonight. He said, you want a king bed or double beds? I said, I'd like to have double beds, please. And here I am going, you know, because got, we got 10 of us, so we're, you know, I'm planning, you know, we'll, hopefully there's a couch in there and everything. So anyway, I go, I go there, you know, to make the reservation, and he asked that dreaded question. Now, sometimes I get by with it, and they won't ask, and you can sneak everybody in, right? <laughs> that don't happen anymore to me. He, he goes, how many, and he's got, an, I won't do the Indian accent, but, uh, you know, my kids wanted me to do the Indian, but anyway. But he, had, he was an Indian, and, and, and so he asked me how, how many, uh, how many uh, people, and I'm like, ten. <laughs> he looked at me like, his eyes got real big, and he's like, you're kidding me, right? You know, in that Indian accent. I'm like, no, I said, unfortunately, I'm not kidding. I said, they're all the same family, though. I said, well, you know, I said, it's no problem. We'll, we'll ten. He said, you can't fit, fit ten people in that room. I said, actually, you'd be surprised. We fit 10 people <laughs> in some pretty tight spots before. I'm pretty cheap, you know, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll sleep like sardines if we have to. So anyway, we, we, he's like, i got to show you this room. And he was persistent. I'm like, okay. And he goes, take me and shows me the room. And, and he's like, well, I'm going to have to charge you for, for anybody over two people. So the, the room was like 100. It was a crazy amount of money. I'm like, I'm like, Phew. I don't want to sleep in the car at Walmart. Anyway, so we well, we'll go out there, and I said, let me go talk to my wife and see if she wants to spend that kind of money. And I knew the answer already, but I just wanted to validate it because I didn't want to be, be the one to blame for not having a night's stay, you know? So anyway, to make a long story short, 
She said, we're not paying that kind of money. We'll sleep, in, you know, we'll sleep somewhere else. And uh, so anyway, I went and told him, and he's like, man, I wish you'd have told me that. He said, we had, before you got here, you, you know, we had this big, you know, this big room, uh, you, you know, that would have slept all of you. And he, he said, if you could fit 10 people in that room, he said, you could have fit 35 in this room. <laughs> But anyway, long story short, we, we did we did find a, a campsite, praise the Lord, you know, after we prayed for it and, and but you know we gotta be prepared, people. We gotta make our reservation. Because someday there's gonna be a day. And we're gonna stand before God and we're gonna give an account. Someday, child of God, we're gonna be weighed in the balances. We're gonna be put on the scales before the Lord. He's gonna say, You know, what about your works? What have you done for me? What have you done for me? You know, it's like the master that trusted his servants, you know, with the talents. What have you done with the talent that I give you? Jason, what did you do with the, with the time and the, the, your ability? I mean, all those things that I blessed you with, the ones that you did, the things you didn't think you could do, and, 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 and you never really allowed me to, to, to work in your life. I don't want to hear that on that day. But more importantly, what about the one who's never trusted Jesus Christ as their personal? Say the one that is lost today. The one that's lost, either here tomorrow, this morning or listening on that uh, Facebook. When you're weighed in the balances, are we going to be found wanting? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the invitation hour here. Lord, I pray that if there's one in our midst, one listening, Lord, that has never trusted you.